Welcome to Untold Physio Stories, a podcast that informs and educates by connecting you to rehab industry leaders who share their candid successes and failures in business and practice. This episode of Untold Physio Stories is sponsored by Edge Mobility System. Edge Mobility System is your online site for everything a PT, OT, DC, MT, ATC, or fitness pro would need. Get certified in blood flow restriction therapy or training online. Check out our full modern manual therapy seminars, ISTM toolkit, edge suspension trainer, portable tables, and more. Untold Physio Stories listeners can save 10% by going to edgemobsys.com. That's E-D-G-E-M-O-B-S-Y-S dot com slash untold to save 10% off their first purchase. Edge Health and Tech Solutions. We do websites that work for you and give you an edge over the competition. Did you know that you have less than 10 seconds to capture someone's interest in your website before they click away? How about the fact that most people are accessing your website from their phone? Save thousands and get a fully mobile, appealing, and SEO-optimized website linked to your social media, email list, and Google My Business. All for one low price and no monthly fees. Why not keep doing what you do best in your business and allow us to handle the tech side? Let's get started. Find us at edgehealthandtech.com. Welcome back to Untold Physio Stories. I'm one of your hosts, Dr. E, with Edge Mobility System, Modern Manual Therapy, and our four-month online mentoring program, Modern Rehab Mastery. And my co-host is... Dr. Andrew Rothschild with uh, Modern Patient Education. You still... Are you Spear or are you A. Rothschild? Still A. Rothschild. Still uh, still rolling with it. All right. I still like Spear, though. Yeah, I always... I remember I, what it stands for, because I know you changed that a couple of times, too. I know. That was the problem. It was always bushy-washy. Right. I mean... Even to come up with two things for SPEAR acronyms, that, that's for, that's not even easy. And then after you come up with them, you're just like, yeah, I'll just go back to my name. I could change it to double SPEAR. <laughs> right, <laughs> SPEAR times two. All right, so this is just a quick update. This will be a quick uh, podcast, but I figure we can talk about nocebo and placebo a little bit more in discussion. So if you guys remember um, a couple weeks ago or last month to date this podcast, this is November 2021. 20, in October, I, I talked about a patient who I thought was centrally sensitized, and she um, she had a history of SIJ fusion. She went to follow up with an osteopath who I was trying to get her to break up with. And uh, I think one of the straws that broke the camel's back is that, um, again, she's had a sp- um, SIJ fusion after having lots of prolotherapy and injections that really weren't helping. This osteopath was always telling her things were out of place, and I was trying to get her not to listen to that. And um, she followed up with him one more time just because, again, she just needs to break up with him, even though she was already 80%, 80% after a couple of visits with me after receiving no help from other um, from the clinician she was currently seeing. And he said, your your SIJ is rotated. It's out of place. And you know she got really upset because obviously it's fused, right? Right. So she also follows up with a physiatrist, local physiatrist. Um, and I used to receive a lot of patients from him really on early on in my career, back when I was probably full of nocebo and filling people um, full of thought viruses and saying I had magic hands. And I relished in that when patients thought I had magic hands. You know, my visit average was like 20 to 30 visits because I was doing all passive care and very little exercise. But um, this guy actually this physiatrist did tell me on the phone once and he says, you know, I all say to my patients that the, the pain won't kill you, but the pills will. So I thought, Oh yeah, that, that's actually a really good saying. And so, um, you know, we, I, I talked to him several times in the past and, but that was maybe like almost 20 years ago. So he doesn't, he doesn't not remember who I am. And she's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go back and see him. I follow up with him every four months. And, I said, well, what does he do for you? And she said, well, sometimes he gives me injections, but you know, I'm not going to need anything now. So, and I, you know, I, so I know there's there's several patients, and it it always confuses me as to why someone follows up with a specialist regularly if there's no secondary gain, right? 
Um, you know, it's like if you, oh, it's, a, it's like a comp patient. It's like, oh, I got to follow up with my surgeon. And then even if they're not even a comp patient, they're like, I'm like, well, do you want surgery? And do you want a shot? And they all say no. And I'm like, well, then what are you following up for? Like, you just enjoy their company? <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy paying a copay and waiting for two hours? Right, right. I mean, again, if it was comp or no fault, I, I would get it if there was no copay. But I mean, she has a copay. It's not, there's no case or anything. And her thing is she she doesn't want to let go of providers in case she needs an injection or in case she needs a referral. I'm like, well, you know, they're not going to hold it against you if you cancel an appointment if you need a service. Like, they shouldn't take it personally because they're they're a professional. You know, it's not – even though I'm saying break up with them, they shouldn't hold any animosity towards you. So A lot of times they might prefer it because that means if they can't help you, they don't – if they can't help you, they prefer to have someone on their schedule who can, they, they may be able to help. Well, maybe, but clearly they think that they're doing something for this patient. Yeah. <laughs> because they keep on rescheduling, right? It's not the patient's not scheduling. The doctor is saying, I'll follow up with you I got in you. four months, even though – I've taken you zero far. Right, 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 right. <laughs> or as far as I could take you. So anyway, at her last last follow-up, um, she's saying that, you know, she's now been pain-free for four weeks straight, right? And she has not had, I mean, and, and I think in my last podcast, she was pain-free for, for four days straight. Yeah. And then, you know, even when it came back, though, it was very low level and it was intermittent. And, you know, again, two weeks into care, um, she was very excited that she had intermittent pain at all because it was constant before. And I was sure that she was centrally sensitized. So again, four weeks straight. I mean, I'm happy when anyone with constant pain goes to intermittent pain, right? That's even, that's great. Because what I always tell people is if you can have relief for hours, you could probably get relief. It's those, it's those ones who, you know, you try your best, you try everything, you throw the kitchen sink at them and they have pain, pain relief for maybe five seconds. And as soon as they get off the table, it's, you know, it's all back. Those are difficult patients. So he's like, okay, I'll see you. I'll see you in four months, you know? Oh, actually, even even before that, uh, she said, okay, well, I gave him your card again. And I said, look, I think you should, I think you should check this guy out. She she said, uh, he spent more time on your website than he did talking to me. (laughs) So he's just like on the computer or on his phone, right? Not even looking at her. Um, and then when he goes, when he finally gets, you know, whatever, reading on my website, clicking through on resources or anything, he says, I'll see you in four months. She's like, well, you know, how about a year? And he said, oh, you've never gone more than four months. I bet, I bet you're going to go four months. So he's like, I'm just going to book you for four months. She's like, I'll see you in a year. Can you believe that? No. You've never gone four months? So terrible. Yes, it is. And on top of that, she she also texted me. She's like, you know, my husband always wants to know. First, it was my husband wants to know why why you're in pain, right? That's not a, that's not a great thing. And she she kind of takes it in stride. I mean, at least she tells me it does. I don't know if she really is totally forthright about if it really hurts her feelings or if she feels like he's not being empathetic or compassionate or anything. But recently, he said, well, you know, you work out so much. How come you have these asymmetrical weaknesses? And, and, you know, she was generally honest about it too. She said, you know, I don't really feel negative about myself when he asked that question. I just honestly want to know for curiosity. And I said, hey, look, you know, I work with a ton of like really high level gymnasts who are super strong and they can hold a plank for, you know, like five minutes and they can do all amazing things on the, on balance beams and hold themselves in rings and things like that. And, and they have asymmetrical weaknesses. Like it's just, you don't know. Like, all I can tell you is that whatever your training is, it's not addressing these weaknesses. It's as simple as that. And she said, oh, okay. But I thought, you know, even on top of that, like her husband's like, why you do, you work out so much? Why do you even still have, still have these problems, right? That those enabling things, I think I find just, I think she's taking everything remarkably well now after I've spent so much time talking with her, yeah. but it, it has been a, a long and hard road, but it, she's still done amazing considering you know, again, I thought she was centrally sensitized. And good for her for, you know, sort of rebuffing the doctor and, and, and sticking and sticking to her guns, you know, scheduling out a year and not being persuaded. Right. Well, I mean, what she's going to do is cancel at the four months and then just re then reschedule. But she, she didn't do it to him because he just wasn't really having it. All right. So where can people find you, Andrew? 
People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at, at a Rothschild PT and of course Modern Rehab Mastery. All right, have a good day. You too. Well, you can find me, uh, Dr. E, at Modern Rehab Mastery. That's our new online mentoring program. It includes modern manual therapy, modern patient education, and modern strength training. It's three months with three mentors, so one month with each mentor, four weeks, tons of modules, lots of CEUs, learn at your own pace for a month, then move on. Um, so go beyond the seminar. You also get chat room um, with your mentees and mentors and live Q and A's every week. Check out all my products, Edge Mobility System. We have the new Edge ISTM toolbox that includes the Edge Mobility Star and the OG Edge Mobility Tool, our Edge Restriction System BFR cuffs. That's part of Dr. Kyle Coffey's Modern Strike Training BFR certificate. Uh, I hope to see you at a live Eclectic Approach course soon. That's Modern Manual Therapy um, in U.S., Canada, and South America. And uh, make sure to rate Untold Physio Stories five stars on Apple Podcasts. You could also subscribe on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. And as always, you guys have an awesome day.